Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade with another tutorial in the Buttons Design and Game Maker Studio 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we're going to be making some toggle buttons. There's really no slides for this, so let's jump over to the code. Okay, we're going to make a toggle button. Select our object folder. We'll come over here, we'll add an object, and we will call it toggle button parent. This needs to be a child of tap button parent because we want to interact with it whenever we tap it. But it does need two additional variables, just like before. We need position, which is going to be an integer, and we'll default it to one. And we're going to need max uh, positions, which will be an integer, which will default to two. Also, let's move this up a little bit. The next thing we need to do is update our methods. So again, we're going to do that by inheriting the create event and then overriding the appropriate methods. This will be our toggle button parent and we'll inherit. So we can come over here, we can see the activate button. So when the toggle button activates, what we want to happen is we want the position to equal the position plus one mod max positions. And again, this will just make the button loop through its available positions. So if max positions is set to two, then it will go zero, one, zero, one. If max positions is set to three, then we'll go zero, one, two, zero, one, two, and so on. And then after updating the position, which we want every version of the toggle button to do, we want to call our own update button function. And here we will have update button equal a new method. And much like with the button parent, for the toggle button parent, we'll have a default method. It will just be default button updated. And we will override and replace this method with each uh, concrete button's actual method that we want it to use. So let's create that button right now. We will call it this object toggle button. We want its parent to be toggle button parent. We don't need to change any of its variables. We can keep those the way they are. But we do want to, as always, inherit and override the actual method that we're going to use. So this will be toggle button. It will inherit. And we want this button to override the update button function with its own method. And it will just be image index equals position. We already have the sprite set up two frames, white and blue, zero frames per second. So it's not going to animate. We're just going to assign this sprite to that button. And now we can place that button in the room. I've already moved the buttons around. Let's place it down here and let's run it and see if everything works. So here we go. We can select all the buttons still. These all still work. That's still inactive. And if we come down here, we can toggle it from white to blue. I want to point out how similar this is to the user event system, but how much nicer it is to be able to name the events, essentially to name the methods. And because we can name the methods, we don't need to keep updating or renumbering our user events. Button parent controls our main interact event, which calls activate button. The next level down, or however you set it up, can call activate button and can override activate button and set up their own. And if there needs to be more events, as many buttons will often require, you can simply create those events or those methods and name them what you want in that parent. And then again, their children can simply override that method. So these buttons, which are fairly basic, can just use the activate button function. However, the toggle button, which needs some more functions or some more methods to do what we want it to do, can use the activate button method and can then call its own method update button. And we don't have to go through what we did in 2.25 where we moved all the user events around. And that is all of the code. Before we finish, I want to go over our diagram. We have our button parent and our tap button parent, which toggle parent inherits from. But toggle parent gets its own variables, 
position and max positions. And here I think we can see how methods and inheritance works cleaner than events. Because the first child of tap button parent, or really whatever interact type you used, gets the activate button method. So these are direct children, they get activate button. Toggle parent is a direct child, it gets activate button. But then any children that come off of toggle parent get update button. And if this object had children, they would get their own method. So there's no more trying to figure out how to name or renumber user events. And in fact, the name of the method really helps you figure out where that object is in the inheritance tree and gives you some structure for extending that tree. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.